to Homeland. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hi. Uh, today I'm going to share about... Is this working? Okay. So I'm going to share about virtualizing a home lab. So most of us... Uh, okay, I won't say most of us. Some of us require the need of networking equipment. But then one, you'll see there's a few issues with running networking equipment at home. So we're going sh I'm going to show you how I do it at home is using virtualization. So why home lab? So for me, or for some of you, is to learn new skills and knowledge, to practice existing skills and knowledge, or in my case, it's primarily to conduct research. So that's my day job. I, I, I need a home lab for this. Uh, to host services, some of you might want to host services at home. But there's a lot of problem. So this, if someone tells you I'm, ha I'm having a home lab, traditionally people would think about this. This is a rack, all right? So there's a lot of problem with running a full-blown rack at home. It takes up space. It's very noisy. I run a 2U at home, and it's already very noisy. My wife is complaining every single day, all right? It's not efficient because if you're running dedicated hardware, you're not fully utilizing the hardware to its full potential. So it's wasted. It's just sitting there. Okay, and it's very, very, very expensive. So if you buy a one U new, you're looking about 3K, 4K easy. All right? You talk about industrial switches, another 1K, another 2K. A switch, huh? it's not even a router. You yeah, you buy a Cisco router, 500, 600, if you're lucky. You're not talking about things like MX routers or ASA routers, just basic Cisco routers. It's very expensive. So the solution. So we're going to make use of advances in virtualization to consolidate all this physical hardware, all right, into one single machine. So to do this, there's a lot of solutions out there. So I'm going to name a few. One is very famous, VMware ESXi. GNS3, all right? I'm going to talk about GNS3 because it's a bit different than the rest. Hyper-V, if you are really into the Microsoft cam. And Proxmox, all right? Or Zen Server, I almost forgot Zen Server. All right? So all these are, if you realize, they're just there as hypervisors. They're there to virtualize your devices. So this is my actual physical setup. It consists of a laptop and a PC, which is where I sit on. A server, which is below there. It's an IBM X3650 Mark III. I got it secondhand, $500. But it's bloody loud. It's 10 years old. 24 threads, 24 gigs of uh, ECC RAM, 3 terabytes of uh, WD Enterprise. 500 bucks, eh? Who, who, who knew? OK. And a switch. A TP-Link SG108E, primarily because I needed VLANs. If not, you can just use any old switch. Okay? Oh, not, not being sponsored by TP-Link, but this is a very bloody good switch. <laughs> it's like 50 bucks, right? This. So this is the network topology. So I sit on the green computer. It connects to my TP-Link switch, which then goes back to my home router. That switch and then will then connect to the IBM server. And inside there, I actually build the actual topology of my network. To your right, with that purple line, is actually my GNS3 server. That is where I spend most of my time. It's actually inside of the GNS3 server. I'll explain why. On the left is a lab which is set up permanently. So you contain a virtual router connected to virtual switches. And then below those switches, there are virtual servers and machines. So we're going to talk about VMware ESXi. It is one of the preferred methods of building a home lab because it's very well documented. It's relatively easy to design and provision resources once you know the quirks. Has multiple methods to support Docker containers if you're into that, all right? Such as using Photon OS or this is something that they're pushing a lot right now. It's called the vSphere Integrated Container. In essence, if you deploy deploy uh, containers in vSphere, they are no longer treated as second-class citizens. A container is treated exactly like a virtual machine. You can provision 
exactly like this is a virtual machine. You can provision IP address. You can even connect it to all the different V switches. It's treated exactly like a virtual machine. Okay. So this is a screenshot of the SXI. This is what a V center looks like if you're not familiar with it. So if you see those gray bars, they are called V switches and they are very, very important if you're going to deploy. All right. So GNS3. It is it initially was created as a way for people to learn for their Cisco examination. It's actually a simulator, right? But it has grown to become more than that. It's well documented. It's relatively easy to design and provision resources because it's very visual. It's based on Ubuntu server and KeyMu Docker as its hypervisors and its container runner. It's, like I said, it's visual in nature. So that's what it looks like. You literally can see where everything is connected to which makes it very, very good for quick ad hoc designs. So differences in routers, so both use VM-based routers, switches. In GNS3, there's a very basic switch. It's a very dumb switch. You can't do anything. In ESXi, everything revolves around their vSwitch. It is a full-featured switch. You can do port grouping, you can do lag, you can do VLANs, everything within the virtual switch. It's built in, okay? Uh, network links, again, GNS3 is visual node. You literally click one node, <coughs> click the other node, click the link. Uh, virtual machine. So for GNS3, you actually have to choose what is your hypervisor. Uh, by default, it uses KeyMu. You can tell it to use VMware. You can use it, virtual box with it. ESXi, well, it's hypervisor itself. I, I'm not sure why you want to run a hypervisor in a hypervisor. But I don't know. So Docker container. Uh, you just plain old Docker. ESXi, you can run VM or you can enable Vic. Oh, actually, this is my last slide already. That was fast. Okay, so why you use GNS3? It's very, very good for building up and tearing down topologies. Uh, you can test out network, set up how you're going to design. And the best thing about GNS3 is that you can inject real world conditions to your network. The thing about GNS3 is it was designed as a simulator. So one of the most powerful things you can use is that you can actually introduce jitter, lag. You can even cause connections to die intermittently. So if you are a network engineer, I'm not a network engineer, right? I use it for other reasons. It's not for the network engineer. It's, it's really, really good. So if you want to test, build your topology. So in ESXi, it's very stable, right? How many of you actually know that your cellular network, your phone lines, is actually virtualized? It's Singtel's network is fully virtualized. I think StarHub is also fully virtualized. And they're actually running on VMware. They're actually running the whole network. If it goes down, it means someone misconfigured the VMware. <laughs> it's very simple as that. Okay, they're actually using uh, VMware NSX. And your entire routing is through overlays. It's really, really cool. Right? So if someone sends a wrong XML file to the server, we all have no internet. Please don't do that. All right? So it's able to scale across servers. That's the nice thing about it. You can have multiple different servers. You can chain them up together if you need more power. And obviously, enterprise usage. So how I utilize my home lab? So I usually sit in GNS3. So uh, my day job is, uh, I'm a researcher in my day job. So normally we'll have like certain scenarios that we need to test and do research on. So for example, oh, do a research on such and such topology. Or for example, oh, industrial network. How can we secure industrial network? So I will have to build the industrial network. I'll build it in GNS3, take a look at it, test it out. And then once I find my finding, I just tear it down. So it's very quick. Sometimes we need to do long-term stuff. Like for example, we need to run honeypots or we need to run stress tests on certain network. So what happens then is, I'll then export the entire topology, VMware and all, and then I'll import it back into ESXi. So my GNSC is ready inside ESXi. I'm actually exporting it out and then back into ESXi as a first-class citizen instead of running it inside of GNS3. And then import it, and then run it. So recommended hardware, you don't need to go out and buy a server. 
actually the most recommended machine if you're doing a home lab is actually an Intel NUC. And I think two days ago, if you are on Twitter and you follow VMware and stuff, someone got an Intel NUC, this one, and they managed to get hold of 32 GB RAMs. Which means each stick that's 32 gigs. Can you imagine that? 32 gigs. I wish I want to buy them now. And then they put it in. So you have 64 gigs of RAM, two high-speed SSDs in a small package, which will not drive your wife nuts. <laughs> All right. Another way is if you are doing like what I'm doing, which is very node heavy, means I have a lot of computational processes doing, you can build cheaply a Ryzen machine or something like that with high thread counts. So that's what we do. So if you want to build or you want to try and test things at home, you don't have to go around. I think we have a switch up there, a very old Cisco switch, which I think I can throw away already. Lah. I don't know what it's <laughs> Okay, it's you can build your own home lab. It's very, very cheap now. You don't have to pay for ESXi. And if you're really into Docker, you don't even have to pay for Vic. It's free. Right? Enterprise things are available for you for free. You can use it. You can use GNS3. The only thing that's not free is the operating system. So for me, okay, wait, wait, wait. let me go back. Da, 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 da. Uh, routers and switches, there are operating systems for them. If you're going to be building or studying enterprise stuff, especially Cisco stuff, you have to buy a service agreement with them to get the images. Uh, or you can go and get them as a student and with their labs. Certain companies actually give them away for free. Why? I don't know. That's how they make money. But So things like Juniper, you can get them for free. Fortinet, you can get them for free, minus the add-ons. But I think most of us will be running PFSense. Lah. Majority of us will be running PFSense. For switches, you can run OpenV switch. You can run Cisco. Hmm? Router OS? Router OS. Yeah, yeah. Router OS is free. Uh, OpenSense is free. Right? You can run whatever you want. So the thing is that you just need to find the operating systems to run. Right? Other than that, it's basically free. You're just paying for the hardware. And that's it. Any question? No? Okay. See, so yeah, it's very fast. Huh? Question? Uh, Okay, that's it.